Good morning. We're so happy to see you this morning. We welcome you to worship. We've had a great opportunity this morning to hear Pastor Zach in the last two services. And today, you will have opportunity to hear Pastor Zach preach his, his first sermon as, as one of the new pastors here at the church. And you're going to be blessed. We're continuing our sermon series called Kool-Aid, First in My Heart. And during the sermon series, we're we're asking and praying and inviting God to revive and to renew and to refresh us. And as we've done it, he has. It's July and some of us had to turn on our heaters, right? Um, it's kind of exciting. And all you people that said you wouldn't do anything till it froze over and do July, you better start doing whatever it is you said you wouldn't do because um, it is time. But we're glad that you're here. I'm Jamie Alexander, one of the pastors. I welcome you. So we join with the as we pray. Father, we thank you so much that you're a God who does new things. That you do new things in our hearts and in our lives. And even when we face the unwanted, you send new revelations of your grace and your mercy. And new floods of your love. And you send new opportunities for us to be refreshed in your presence. And so as we gather here this morning, we come to worship you. And Lord, we invite you here to take captive our heart, our minds. May our focus be on you. Because truly, Lord, we've come to worship you because you're the one who's first in our heart. So as we gather here, Lord, we invite you to be here. And we do so in the life-changing name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is in his holy name we pray. And together we say, Amen. Good morning. I'm Jan Lowe, Minister of Congregational Care. Glad to see everyone here this morning. If you're a guest with us, we want you to know how pleased we are that you're worshiping here today. If you're a guest for the first time, we hope that we can share some information with you that's going to make you want to come back again and again. The way you can help us make that happen before you leave this morning, if when you step out into the narthex, there's a desk there, we just ask that you give us your name and address. When we have that, this week, someone will stop by your home. They will not be there for a visit. They just want to say thank you for worshiping with us. They are going to give you a mug that is yours to keep, and that mug is going to contain information that tells all about the ministries that this church is a part of. The way that, ways that we have to serve our Lord, ways that we have to serve people in our community and beyond, and ways that we have to serve one another. Um, in the meantime, we just ask that, that everyone enjoys the, the presence in this place this morning, the, uh, the relationships that you can have in this place, and, and we're grateful for you being here. We do have attendance pads, and the attendance pads have probably already been passed. If someone new has come to the row that you're in, pass them one more time. When we see your name on that list, we know you've been here. It also helps us to figure out who wasn't able to be here, and that way we can do a better job of staying in touch with our church family. If you will open your bulletins to ministry, opportunities, and events, I've got just a couple that I would like to cover with you. The first one is the party that's coming up next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, it, is, it is proper and fit that, uh, that Pastor Zach is giving his first sermons here today because next Sunday evening we will be welcoming Zach and his family in celebrating their birthdays as they come into the fellowship of this church. We are excited to do this. And so this is a little bit different way of, of having a welcome party, but it seems very befitting. Uh, he has three children, Eli and Liam and Leo, and uh, they are just delightful if you haven't seen or heard uh, or uh, been with them yet, but you will get a chance to visit with them on Sunday evening. You can bring a birthday gift if you want for the children and or for the family, and there's a little list of things here under you are invited to a party down at the bottom, and that's completely optional. So the thing we want most is for you to be here, and not only will you be celebrating the birthdays of Zach 
Mac and his family, but also your own birthday because there's going to be a table set up for every month of the year. And so one of those months is bound to be yours and you will be able to celebrate with cake and ice cream for your birthday too. Supercharged, have you heard that expression before? I think it seems very appropriate for what is coming up a month from now. And that is an event that we're going to have here at the church. And it is to invite the whole community to come and get to know us and let us just show them a very good time. We're going to have hot dogs and, and uh, chips and drinks and watermelon and, and just lots of fun things and free things. And it should be a very fun time. So watch, you know, keep it on your calendar and mark that date so that you'll be sure to be able to come to that. That is on a Friday evening, August 15th. The last thing I want to tell you about is the United Methodist Women's Rummage Sale, which is coming up in two weeks on Saturday. Um, that is August 2nd. And uh, the thing that we need to know now that we're kind of down to the wire is that this week right here is the week in which you are going to finalize all the things that you're going to bring to the rummage sale. Next week, a week from tomorrow, uh, is the, the week that you can bring everything. So the week right up before the rummage sale, starting Monday, a week from tomorrow, you can bring all of your stuff that you're going to give to the rummage sale. And just remember, if you think, oh, I don't know, this might be kind of good to put in a rummage sale, all the proceeds from the rummage sale, the United Methodist women give to charities in our community and beyond. So uh, it all, all goes to a good cause. Thank you and God bless.
Amen. I invite you to join us in our affirmation of faith. This morning our affirmation of faith is taken from the book of 1 Timothy. It's printed for you in your bulletin, but you can also find it presented for you on the screens. I invite you to join with us as boldly we proclaim. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, was manifest in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Great to be worshiping with you this morning. Hopefully uh, you feel the same way. And be sure to say hello to someone who is sitting nearby that you recognize. Or that you don't. And say hello.
morning. All through the Bible, there's these little verses that where God tells us about how much he loves us and how unfailing his love is for us, and no matter what. And this is another one. This is, um, I'm going to read from Jeremiah 31, verse 3. Jeremiah is quoting the Lord who is speaking to the people of Israel. Listen to the word of God. The Lord appeared to me, meaning Israel, from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Julie. And that is a wonderful word that the Lord would say, I have drawn you with everlasting love. And so together we, we're drawn here, knowing that our God is a God who meets us at every point of our need. This past week was an exciting week for us here in the ministry of First United Methodist Church of Bella Vista, in that we had the annual Vacation Bible School. And before you are some of our Vacation Bible School friends. These, they came as children, but we transformed them into robots. Uh, uh, the theme of Vacation Bible School was called Workshop of Wonders. And, and so it was things that had to do with creating and building, um, imagining. And we had a great group of leaders and adults that helped. Over 40 volunteers helped, and we had over 65 children that were here. And we, it was a wonderful week just to witness the children and hear them sing. And uh, they sang in the last service, but through the visuals and, and through my description, I hope that you can gather that it was a wonderful week and thank you so much for your support in every way that you helped if if only to pray that was a incredible encouraging support for the ministry this past um, vacation bible school they chose habitat for humanity as their mission project since we were dealing with building in a workshop it just fit so perfectly that it seemed like that's what god wanted the children to do and so each night they brought their dimes and their quarters and their dollars and, and pennies and added up. And collectively, the children, they raised $129.86 for Habitat of Humanity. They were 14 cents short, making it 130 I bet here, there's somebody here who's got 14 cents that you put in that offering plate just to help the children say, we raised $130. So it was a great week, and we thank you for all the ways that you helped us in the week. I want to invite the ushers to come forward now. It's our time to worship the Lord with a presentation of his tithes and our offerings. <laughs> 
We are so grateful for all that God is and does for us in our life. And as we present our offerings to him, as we present the tithes that he asks for us, we do so in our, as a part of our worship. as an act of our worship, we present unto you the tithes that you ask for um, from us. And we present unto you the gifts that we make, our offerings. Receive all that I hold. And use it, Lord, so that the kingdom, the glory land, the place that we are promised will become even a greater reality through our love and our relationship with you as we share the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, who is Lord and Savior of our life. It's in the sovereign name of your Son we pray, and together we say, Amen.
and I invite you to be seated. I hope that you've noticed the lemonade stand welcome center that's in the narthex. And if you've been in Becker Hall where the coffee fellowship time is held, you, there's a creation of a lemonade stand there or Kool-Aid stand. Those are, go along with our sermon series, Kool-Aid, First in our, My Heart, as we seek to really refocus ourselves if we've kind of lost focus on the one who loves us most. And those visual images are, were created to help us. And so I want to thank Suzanne Rushy for, for being the mastermind behind all that. And for Jan Shaw, those ladies are both in this service. They even roped in their neighbor, who's not even a member of this church, to come and help them to create those. So we make sure that you allow them to know how grateful we are for their help in, in this sermon series. I want to share with you prayer requests that we've received in this past week or, or updates on persons that we need to pray for. At the conclusion of the service, you will be handed a sheet, that, a more exhaustive sheet, comprehensive sheet of prayer requests and Peggy DeWitt will be at the back door underneath the Narthex sign if you'd like to have one of these you can pick it up there but in your bulletin is a slim insert and on this insert it shows with you the most recent updates of who has been in and out of the hospital and things that are going on before us we have a carnation signifying the life of one of our church family members who has passed away and and emerged to the church triumphant her name is Ruby Quinnen, and she and her husband, Hugh, were members here at the church, longtime members of the church until they relocated to Texas in 2010. And so we want to pray for her family and, and her home going. Currently, Vern Bladen is a patient at Legacy Village, that's Circle of Life Hospice Care in Bentonville. He moved there on Monday. And I ask that you would be faithful to lift him helm up in prayer and also praying for his wife, Reen. And together they have seven children, and that equals a lot of grandchildren. So please hold them in, faithfully in your hearts and prayers at this present time. Two of our church family members that we are aware of had surgery this week. And one was Sue Niebrick. Sue had knee replacement surgery in Prescott, Arizona. She has a son who lives there, and so she went to be closer to her family in this time of surgery and recovery rather than... Um, them coming here that way she didn't have to clean the house did she and um and then we want to remember Juanita Franklin she had rotator cuff surgery and she, her surgery was on Friday please be in prayer for Vicki Jones and Pat Mayer and for the treatments that they are or will be receiving or are receiving and also be in prayer for everyone on our prayer concern list Wanda Holiday, who's recently been in the hospital and recovering and Shree Fort is scheduled for surgery this week. She is a lady in our church family who needs um, a kidney um, transplant. She, sing, she ministers in our praise and worship service. And, and so we're continually praying for her and for her health. And, and her health is definitely affected by this great need, and she is on dialysis. But there's all these other persons on this list that we want to ask you to be in prayer for. You know, we have a privilege of praying for churches and um, fellowships of faith in the Bella Vista community. And we have begun praying for that list over again because we've prayed for all the churches up through last Sunday and we started praying again. Last week, we prayed for Abundant Life Ministries and this week we're praying for the Ambassadors in Christ Academy, which is a Christian school located here in Bella Vista. And we want to be in prayer for the, for the school as they prepare for the upcoming school year, for the faculty, students, staff and, and for the parents I invite you now to go with me before the Lord's throne of grace and and to focus our hearts in prayer this morning I invite you to join us in the prayer song turn your eyes upon Jesus
loving God, you're the one who is faithful. You're the one who baptizes us in lavish amounts of your love. You're the one that redeems us from the penalty of our sin through your Son who is Lord and Savior of our life. You're the one who reveals yourself as the Prince of Peace. And is calm in midst of the storm. As the way maker when we are concerned of which way to go. You're light in our darkness. You are strength in our weakness. You are God and you are not ashamed for us to be identified with you. And Father, we thank you for the words of the prophet Jeremiah. For the reminder that you're a God who has drawn us with an ever-loving kindness. And that your loving kindness never fails. It's never cut away from us. But it flows like a mighty river into our hearts and our lives. Continually, you're doing a new thing through your love. And Father, today we thank you. That it is your love that reveals to us the cool aid that we need in life. through The work of your Holy Spirit, your presence. And so today, Lord, we gather. And we come from weeks of activities and preparing for a week ahead. And so we bring with, to this sanctuary of your presence our hearts. Collectively, Lord, we pray, we've been praying this week for victims and families of flight MM17. We pray for hearts that are are devastated over the grief of this tragedy. And ask you, Father, to reveal all that is needed to hearts that are so disturbed and so confused. And so broken. And we pray for Sue Niebrig, for Juanita Franklin, and for Pat Mayer and Vicki Jones, and Ann McClellan, or McLean, and Harold Fitch, and Helen Randolph, and Bob Tony, and Jack Hunter, Wanda Holiday, and so many others, Lord, we pray for, for reality of health needs and healing. We know you are God who healeth. You healeth from the inside out. And we thank you, Father, that you're, we discover your faithfulness even in the times in which we have to endure. Today, Lord, we also pray for Vern Bladen and for his wife, Reen, and for their children and families and ask you, Lord, to meet Vern at every point of his need. Guard Reen's heart and strengthen them, Lord, in your love. It's our privilege to pray for Ambassadors of Christ Academy, and we ask you, Lord, to be with the faculty and staff, students and parents, and as they prepare for our upcoming school year. May it be a time of refreshing, a great time of blessing for them. So, Father, this morning, as we prepare to pray the prayer that you've taught us to pray, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. And, Lord, we ask you to restore us in your righteousness so that we may be refreshed, renewed, and revived as your sons and your daughters. So, sin, you're refreshing, Lord. We ask this. In the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray, as together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those. Who knows, 
maybe third time is the charm, right? And, and you have chosen wisely today in uh, coming to uh, the third service. Uh, uh, it, is, it is the worst one. Not service, um, maybe not even sermon that you will hear from me, but uh, the first one, right? That's the one where the most pressure lies. Your, your, your first impression of me, um, where we go from here, the nerves are the worst at the first one, um, what to say, what to do, it's, it's all a part of that first sermon. And so as you leave this morning, you're probably going to have one of three, um, one of three, one of three reactions as you leave. Uh, the first being, okay, he wasn't that bad. All right, he can, he's, it's all right. Um, the second being, well, we, we could tell he was a little bit nervous, but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, and so moving forward, it'll be okay. And then the last one, which hopefully it's not this one, is, wow, that was a little rough. Hopefully, Brother Jamie will give us a schedule of when he's preaching so we can plan vacations <laughs> and uh, sleep in on certain Sundays. So, um, yeah. But hopefully, hopefully it's not the last one. It is uh, great to be uh, worshiping with you this morning. It's great to be continuing our series Um, Cool aid, um, putting God first in our hearts, spiritual simplicity refreshed. And prayerfully, as we leave this place this morning, there will be something that God can use um, that will refresh us, that will send us out from this place refreshed and ready to face the week and will sustain us over the next week until we can gather again in his name next week. So um, we will be uh, continuing... um, the, the sermon series and invite you if you have your Bible and would like to uh, follow along. We'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 43, beginning in verse 2. And when G- Brother Jamie had originally sent me the text, I thought I was reading 2 through 19. And so I was thinking, okay, that's, that's good for a first sermon scripture because it's long enough. If I get really nervous, I can just read really slow. And uh, say a few things and we can go from there. But uh, it, was, it was just a, a few verses um, from chapter 43. So we will begin um, reading in verse 2 if you would like to follow along. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God. The Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you. And then picking up in verse 18. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is the word of God. For the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so as we pick up this scripture this morning, we once again find the Israelites in the midst of exile. Crying out to God, the the Babylonians have control over them. And God is is presenting this word to them. And and, and we hear it this morning and, and we can apply it and it can comfort our lives just as it comforted the Israelites. Now, first off, God is saying, don't be afraid in the midst of the waters of life as, as they overwhelm you, as, as life passes you by quickly, as you're in the hurts and the pains and the struggles of life. I am with you. Do not fear. And he says that to us as well. And then as, as we skipped over uh, some of the scriptures, what God is telling the Israelites is he, he, he's telling them, you are my witnesses. You testify to me and to others that I am the one true God. I am the one who has delivered you and saved you in the past. 
Remember the exodus from Egypt. Tell that story and and show the Babylonians where their gods fall short and where your God rises to the top. I am God and I am with you. But then he also warns them in, in the closing of the scripture that we read this morning not to get completely caught up with how he has worked in the past. He, he tells them not to put him in a box. Don't, don't assume that I'm going to work in the same way that I worked in Egypt. I'm going to deliver you, but this time it will be in a new way. I'm working in a new way in your life. And I, and I think that's where we have to begin this morning. Because just like for the Israelites, God is working a new thing in our life. God wants us to put him first in our hearts so that that new thing can come to fruition. I'm I'm reminded of what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.17 when he says, Therefore, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. And, And so God wants to begin that new creation in us. But if you're like me, oftentimes when when we're thinking about new things and and starting new habits and and, um, doing new in our life, we like to put it off, don't we? Or or at least I do. I'll use the example of of getting healthier uh, because that seems to be always a goal of mine. Um, I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to live healthier. I'm going to be better. But I can't do it on the same day that I think of it, um, because I have to have one more day of being bad, right? I have to have one more day of, of eating out and uh, going to Brahms to get ice cream or, or Andy's frozen custard and getting ice cream. I can't do it on the day that I think of it, because I have to have that one more day of being bad. And then maybe I find myself on a Wednesday, and I think, okay, I really need to get better again, so on Monday, I'll start this new thing. I'll start being healthier. For some of us, maybe it's that we're in the middle of July and we think, well, come New Year's, I will do something different in my life. How many, did did anybody do a New Year's resolution this year? Anybody? A a couple of people? Uh, Not a whole lot. Um, not, not a whole lot in, in any of the services. On average, Americans, uh, 40 to 45% of Americans do a New Year's resolution um, each year. Of those 40 to 45%, according to uh, research done by Scranton University, 8% follow through or actually achieve their New Year's resolution. And so this year, I, I get to proudly say that I am in that 8%. I uh, promised myself that I would eat out more, so check, I've done that. I I told myself that I would gain more weight, check, done that. Uh, I'm doing really well this year, and and I also told myself that I would procrastinate more. And so this morning as I was doing the sermon, I thought, yep, I'm living into that one as well. Um, What is it... uh, about our our lives, that that we want to put off doing a new thing. Maybe it's because we're lazy. Maybe it's because we're scared. There's several different reasons. But this morning, God is saying to us that He wants to do a new thing in our lives. If we will put Him first in our hearts, we will be a new creation. We will begin to live into how he has designed us and what he longs for our lives as we live into that new creation. It's not always easy. Sometimes we fail at it. We fall short. We mess up. We, we move back into our old habits. But that's when we actively seek and pursue his renewal his cleansing in our lives, his forgiveness. 
because we've fallen short, we've messed up, but he is still there. He is still longing for us to be that new creation. And as life happens, there will be times when we do fall back, we, we mess up. There will be times in which we feel that the waters of life are going to overwhelm us and overtake us, and we will sink to the bottom. But just as he told the Israelites, he, he's telling us the same thing this morning, do not fear for I am with you. I'm walking with you in the midst of your hurts and your pains and your heartaches. I am holding you up in the waters when they're rushing all around you to keep you afloat. And sometimes maybe we forget that and, and the waters overwhelm us. Maybe you've experienced that in your own life. A time where waters have overwhelmed you or felt like you were being overwhelmed. Maybe you've just come out of a time like that, or maybe you're heading into a time like that. There have been several instances in my life where, where that has happened, where it felt like the waters of life were rushing all around me, and that I was going to sink, but God is there with me. Just to give you a few, and, and there are so many uh, that I could use, but uh, these are a few, and, and you'll hear more about each of these, I'm sure, in, in future um, sermon illustrations and stories. But times in which I felt the waters of life rushing all around me, one being moving off to college. The waters of life rushing around. Asking the question, will you marry me? Not because I didn't want to, not that I wouldn't do it again this very moment, but because we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Moving off to Kentucky for the first time as newlyweds, the waters of life. Hearing the words, I'm pregnant. Definitely felt like we were drowning there. Hearing, hearing the words, you're pregnant with twins. Whole new uh, concept. Hit us again. Anytime you get a call from the DS during the appointive, system, uh, appointed, appointive season and you hear those words that you are moving, not knowing what is next or what life will look like, the new routine and structure, what it's all going to be about it. And now we have three new little people that will take the journey with us and go with us. The waters of life rush all around us. And maybe you haven't experienced any of those, but, but you've heard the words from your boss, you're fired. And not knowing what you will do next or what will happen next. Having the doctor come in and say, it's cancer. The waters of life rush around us. But God is there saying, do not fear, for I am with you. And so in those times when we forget or, or we fall short, we have to actively seek out God's renewal. God, renew me. Renew my mind, my body, my spirit. Cleanse me from the inside out that I might glorify you and live into the life that you long for me, that you have for me, that I would be this new creation that you want me to be. And most importantly, forgive me. Lord, forgive me when I fall short. Forgive me when I hurt myself, when I hurt someone else, or when I hurt you. Forgive me. And why? Why does God do these things? Why does God renew us and cleanse us and forgive us? And I think it's summed up in, in verse 4 of chapter 43, something that we haven't read yet. 
But God is speaking to the Israelite people and he is speaking to us this morning. And he's saying, because you are precious in my eyes, because you are precious in my eyes. You are honored, and I love you. I love you. God is telling us that this morning. I love you. That is why I renew you. I cleanse you. I forgive you. Because I love you. Put me first in your heart that we might begin this new creation. Gracious God, we thank you for this morning and for this time of worship. We pray this morning that you would renew us as we put you first in our hearts, as we move out some of the clutter and the things that get in the way for for us in, in putting you first. And in the times when we falter or we forget or, or we just get lost, we pray for your renewal, for your cleansing, and for your forgiveness. It's in your name we pray. Amen. This morning, uh, maybe you're uh, worshiping with us and you would like to put God first in your heart. Uh, this morning for the first time. And, and we would invite you to come forward and do that. Um, the altar is open. If, if you would like to uh, spend some time in prayer, or, or maybe you would like to um, become a part of Bella Vista First United Methodist uh, Church family and become a part of that. And um, as I am uh, getting to know people and, and getting more familiar with people, um, I can tell you that uh, you would be welcomed here. Uh, there's, there's some pretty good folks uh, around. Uh, so uh, you would be welcomed, and, and we invite you to, to be a part of, of uh, our family. Um, you also may come forward uh, during the singing of, of our hymn of invitation this morning if, if you feel so led. Um, so let us stand and join together in our hymn of invitation.
But right there on the sermon manuscript that Zach didn't offer to you was the number four. And that was, why don't we just let Zach preach every Sunday and then Brother Jamie doesn't have to do anything. I like that option a lot. As I, as I say, you know what? There's, the best thing about someone else preaching on Sunday morning is Saturday night. <laughs> it is good. And Lionel Richie had it so wrong when he said, easy like Sunday morning. He was not a preacher. I promise you. <laughs> but we're glad that you've been here this morning. And we're so glad that Zach and his family are part of our church family. And you'll be excited next Sunday to get, have the opportunity to meet all the children and in the family when we celebrate the birth of their ministry here at First Shine Methodist Church with a birthday party. Let's see, it all goes hand in hand in that way. Go in the knowledge that God is a God who's faithful. Faithful in our past, faithful in this present moment. And he's the Lord who's faithful for our future. And remember, please remember, don't simply come to church, but what are we called to be? Be the church. Have a great day.